What does high school football, the NFL, Facebook, Amazon, Walmart, what do they have to do with your business? In a minute, I'm going to explain. It's very good insight. It's going to help you the way you look at business. First, let me thank all of you who over the last week sent us your emails in response to my newsletter asking for you to share your personal situation and circumstances with your business. Man, you guys did not disappoint. You guys sent us a flood of emails. Some of them were somewhat brief, some were lengthy. But um, awesome, absolutely awesome. All of your emails did get read. I personally didn't read them all. I read a lot. I read a lot. But let's not get it twisted. I didn't have time to read them all. Um, but I did talk about all the emails in general with, uh, with my team. And we extracted a lot of great information. In fact, I think this is going to be a lengthy video because I got some good stuff I want to get through to offer detailed feedback in response to your many emails. So I encourage you. Watch this entire video. I have a strong feeling that this is going to be a barn burner video because I'm going to drop some good knowledge on you as well as give you a great opportunity towards the end. So make sure you watch this lengthy video till the end. So I want to start by talking about the top 10 businesses with the most cash on hand. Now, of the top 10, Facebook ranks in at number five with $52.3 billion cash on hand. Amazon is right behind them at the number six position with $43.7 billion with cash on hand. Now, if you've been watching any of my videos, you know, hey, I like Amazon. You know, my wife orders from them every day. Uh, I own a ton of their stock, love it. Stock's doing well. Uh, I own a lot of Facebook stock too, okay? I love all the tech, good stuff, it's all good stuff. But personally, in addition to me loving Dunkin' Donuts, which is not in the top 10, I also love Walmart. Uh, I don't own their stock, but man, I shop, I shop a lot of their stuff online. Um, but here's the irony for as much as I love Walmart and everybody hears, hears about Walmart. Everyone's always the Walmart versus the Amazon war battling back and forth. Here's the irony. Amazon is in the number six position with the most cash on hand at $43.7 billion. Walmart, who's been around for a million years, much longer than Amazon, is not even in the top 10, not even close. Not even close yet. Everyone's heard of Walmart. They've been in the news a million and one times for a long, long time. Yet they're not even in the top 10. Walmart isn't even ranked, but Walmart has $9.28 billion cash on hand. So let me recap this real quick. Facebook out of the top 10 uh, largest companies with the most cash on hand, Facebook, is at position five with $52.3 billion, followed by Amazon at number six with $43.7 billion. Walmart is nowhere is even remotely close to the top 10 because they only have a measly little $9.28 billion on hand. Now, I know you're asking, what does this have to do with my business? I'm about to get there. Uh, I, the reason I'm going through this is a while back um, when I was talking about uh, different investments and stocks and all that kind of good stuff, someone sent me an email talking about why do I waste my time talking about that stuff? It has nothing to do with any MT. Oh, contraire, mon frere. Let me explain. So while Facebook is the number five with $52.38 billion cash on hand, they only have 35,587 employees. That's impressive. So Facebook has $52.3 billion cash on hand for only 35,587 employees in total. Amazon at number six with $43.7 billion cash on hand has only 647,500 employees. 
Now that sounds like a lot more than Facebook, and it is. Facebook has less than 40,000. They have just over 35,000 employees. Amazon has just under 650,000. So we're looking at you know, well over 600,000 employees more that Amazon has than Facebook. The reason why Walmart, as big as they are, the nation's largest retailer, blah, 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 Walmart has 2,200,000 employees. And that's actually down 4.35% from 2018. Joel, what does this possibly have to do with my small mom and pop operation, my NEMT business, my home care business, my broker business, blah, blah, blah. What does any of that have to do with my business? It speaks to capacity. Capacity is absolutely critical. The reason why I always, in addition to owning their stock, the reason why I like to observe and see what these companies are doing and how they're managed, first of all, they're painfully uh, visionaries. They don't play, and I, you know, I talked about this in detail in some of my previous videos. I talked about it at the roundtable gathering. One of the best things that I've really skills that I've acquired over the years and really put into practice that's really helped me is I never play uh, by today's standards. Joel Davis, when I when I as I approach my own personal businesses, I am always trying to play the game two and three years ahead as a minimum. For example. Uh, as of this shooting of this video in two days, I need to go meet with some people and we're talking about things we're going to be doing in 2022 and 2023 and yet here it is 2020. I mean, that's just the way it is and that's the way it should be and I want you doing the same thing. But in going back to the numbers I just shared with you, what's beautiful about this, it speaks to the capacity and efficiency and when I'm working with you uh, to build and grow your NEMT business, your home care, your uh, your broker business, I am always trying to not only get you to think two and three years ahead, but focused on capacity. You know, recently I talked about uh, this one client provider I was working with, and he was just adamant, I need to start my business with a minivan and blah, 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 blah. Found him a great full-size van, perfect price point, met all the specs that we want, went in detail, explained why he wants this vehicle, yada, yada, yada. But he was adamant. His competitors are running minivans. He's going to run minivans. Now, for I told him, I said, I don't even know why you hired me because realistically, your competitors, for all you know, you want to model yourself after them, yet for all you know, they could be going out of business soon. They could be going bankrupt. You wouldn't know. But okay, go ahead, follow them. Regardless, the reason why uh, I wanted the vehicles that I wanted is because everything I do, it's about you personally increasing capacity at a lower price point, increasing and improving your daily efficiency and logistics at a lower price point. So what does Facebook, Amazon, Walmart, what do they have to do with your business? Hey man, if you're like me, hopefully you've invested in a lot of their stock because their stock's doing well, making good money, all that kind of good stuff. But I love the fact that these companies, look, by all, by all measurement, by all standards, even though I make a lot of money, done ex exceptionally well, I am an abject failure. If you were to compare me to, let's say, Amazon. I mean, you take Bezos, he started in his garage. Now he's literally sending rocket ships out of out, outer space. They're so diversified. It's incredible. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. I, you, know what, you know what, Jeff? Keep doing it, man, because I love what the stock's doing. But think about it. They only have six, 647,000 employees. Yet they are at the number six position with $43.7 billion cash on hand. That is a huge ROI and speaks to their overall capacity. It is beautiful. Yet so many people, uh, and many of you who I've read through your emails and where you're at, this and that, there is no capacity doing more with less ROI is nowhere in your equation. Let me break this down a little bit further. What does this video have to do with high school football in the NFL? When I sold my business, hey, I had great cash on, uh, cash on hand. I had a nice pot of gold that I took with me. Beautiful. Worked out great. One of the luxuries I had is I had more time on my hand when I left the NEMT business from being an, an operator myself and actually owning the business. So one thing I did, uh, I actually became the assistant head coach 
uh, at my old my old alma, ma alma mater. And what I used to do is after a game, we would of course we'd watch our video from the game so the kids could watch themselves, learn everything like that. But especially uh, preseason, and then after we watched our game, I always showed them cut-ups. I had a huge library of cut-ups that were very recent at that time of different NFL players, NFL plays, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And some of our coaches that I coached with, they said, why are you showing them NFL clips? I mean, why aren't you just studying more of the, you know, the teams we'll be playing, the teams we'll be... I said, because I don't want them to compare themselves to some other 16, 17, 18-year-old snot-nosed high school football player. I want them to see what the pros are doing, guys who are making a boatload of money, who are professionals, who have years of skill and experience. I want them replicating and emulating uh, emulating what these NFL guys are doing. I want them to see what real skill is versus what some overweight or underweight skinny snot-nosed little high school punk is doing in the same area and region. Why would I want them to compare themselves to that? I want them shooting for the stars. I want them to see what the pros do. I want them learning what the pros do. I want them emulating what the pros do. And that's what, what this entire video in regards to what, what does Facebook, Amazon, Walmart, look, am I expecting you to send rocket ships to outer space? No. Am I expecting you to, to be like Elon Musk and start tunneling, doing all these tunnels and all? No, not at all. But I love what these companies do. I love, well, I don't love, I don't love Tesla, Tesla stock too much right now. I had to dump it. But um, I love the fact that these guys are huge visionaries, huge geniuses in their own right, but I love the companies. The companies do more with less. And that is the premise of what you need to take away from this video. If you wanna make real money, you need to be doing more with less. My goal is that you, you build your business, make a lot of money with your business, have cash on hand. You wanna be making enough money. Everything I teach you in your business, is empowering you so you make real money not not the medicaid brokers not the government look if you're working for the if, if you're building your business chasing after the low-hanging fruit then let's just let's not get it twisted you work for the government so many of you watching this right now i know you hate me okay i get all that send me all your hate me whatever i don't care i don't read it anyways when you when you go when you just become so infested and so buried so entrenched with all that medicaid broker stuff because it's it's free money, it's guaranteed money. All that low-hanging fruit, you're a slave to the government. That's all you do, that's all you do. You're not building your own business, and guess what? Your rates of reimbursement are never gonna be big enough for you to sell your business, cash out with Sirius Bank, and have nice cash on hand. You won't do it. So, all of the, what I just told you, Facebook, Amazon, Walmart, Walmart isn't even remotely close to the top 10 because look how top heavy they are. They have 2.2 million employees and that's down 4.35% from 2018. I don't want you to be huge, robust, top heavy. I want you to do more with less. I'd rather you have five highly profitable vehicles than 10 marginally or less than profitable vehicles. I'd rather you have 12 highly profitable vehicles than you to have 24 less than profitable vehicles. You need to increase your capacity, be able to do more with less. That's why when I tell you the type of vehicles you want to buy, you want to buy them for a reason. When I tell you how you want to structure your daily operation, you want to do it for a reason. When I tell you that you want to work this shift and that shift and this shift and be available for work, it's for a reason. I can assure you. Now. Let's dive in and take a look at some of uh, the awesome emails that you guys sent us and allow me to provide some excellent feedback. All right, I'm gonna try to do this as fast as I can because I got some great notes here, some great excerpts from some of your great emails. So, as I run through these as fast as I can, remember, I want you thinking what I just told you. My goal is to help you make money, create wealth, do more with less, increase your capacity. Now, I'm going to just shotgun blast a lot of this stuff right to you. Now, this one I got to put in here. I, I just had to put this in here because I just love this guy's email, the way he was so systematically methodical of how he sent this. 
This is a shout out to Terrence Dodson. He said, number one, first thing I did was search for anyone that knew anything about the NEMT industry and I found you. That would be me, the fat man. Number two, next I purchased your read, you purchased and read your ebook, How to Build a Million Dollar Medical Transportation Company. Awesome read and learned a lot. Love hearing that, uh, Terrence. Number three, I purchased your DVD series. Good stuff, helped me tremendously. Love it, Terrence. Number four, purchase your private pay report. Number five, purchase your business plan. This helped me to complete my business plan. I actually meet with my SCORE advisor on the 19th for review. This is the first step of our meeting. She's already applauding that it looks great. Love it, Terrence. Um, number six, purchase your dispatching for dollars. Plan to purchase DME when I get started. Another excellent read. Number seven, purchase your custom market analysis waiting in the queue. Uh, number eight, subscribe to your newsletter and your YouTube videos. Watch your videos regu regularly, almost daily. Love it. Keep doing it. Number nine, by Terrence Dodson. Plan to purchase more of your material and your one-on-one -on -one services when I get to that point. Joel, all you're trying to do is just pat yourself on the back. No, what I'm trying to do is give you some love, Terrence, because I love what you're doing. You are painfully methodical. Love it. Love the way you broke it down. Now, here's where things are going to start to get a little interesting. There's one common theme, one of many common themes in um, all your emails that you guys sent to us. And again, um, didn't read them all, but they were all read. Uh, but I did read a lot of them. I probably read about 40, 40 to 50% of them myself, which is a good number. Um, Cedric Fala. If I mess up any of your names, forgive me. I'm not the sharpest tack in the, in the drawer there. Cedric Fala. You got fear of failure. Sarah Gonzalez, you got fear of failure. Sean Dennison, you got fear of failure. Christine Albright, you got fear of failure. Javon and Jathan Dorch, Javon and Jathan Dorch, nervous and anxious. Here's why I put that in there, and let me speak to that for a minute. Fear of failure, what does that mean? I'm just gonna go off on a quick little tangent here. I don't know. Fear of failure uh, means different things to different people. What motivates you to be have this fear of failure? I'm not sure. Is it? Is it? Are you so uh, anxious? You have anxiety over spending the money. That well, that's definitely of concern, and you, you gotta you gotta figure that out. Um, are you? Some people have fear of failure because they're worried about what other people think. Who cares what other people think? Who cares what other people think? I know it's easier said than done. We all have egos and pride, this and that. But man, if it's one skill I've learned and acquired over the years, it's to just totally not care. And again, I, it, back in the day when I was fixing to launch my first business, my NEMT business, and everyone was telling me, oh, Joel, you know, you should think about going work for Lockheed Martin or get your safe, secure job, West Point grad, got a major in pre-law, minor in system engineering, you could do a lot, blah, blah, blah. Dude, nah. I had to swim upstream, go against the current, you know, buck the system. Uh, family was telling me to do different things, friends were telling me different things. If I fell on my face, I'm sure they'd all laugh at me, say, see, I told you so. So realistically, you could argue that would offer, that could easily offer uh, motivation to have a fear of failure. Uh, but thank God, thank God, um, I chose to go it alone and not listen to everybody else because, man, not only have I made infinitely more money versus had I gone and got the safe, secure job, um, you know, over the years, it's been a blessing. I've been able to help some of these people who told me to go get the safe, secure job. Guess what? They lost their job. They got laid off. They got aged out, whatever it was. And I'm sure many of you watching this, you've, you've endured the same thing. Bottom line is this. I can't speak to what your specific motivation is for your fear of failure, but I encourage you, do some serious self-evaluation, self-analyzing. And if you're going to move forward, with any type of a business, um, you know, risk and entrepreneurship, I tell people, you know, it's the glove and the hand. They go together. Um, but that doesn't mean you need to be fearful of it. Um, you know, I, I, let me tell you one thing that motivates me. Time. Time motivates me. We are not getting any younger. We are not getting any younger. If it's one thing I want to do, it's leverage time. And I can assure you, there is nothing better 
than back in the day when I was starting my business and I was grinding it out. My employees were making more money than I was. Uh, some of the people we were transporting had more value, had more wealth than I did. But man, it was such a short period of having to grind it out. That's not to say I don't work hard now because man, I put a lot of time in, I work hard. But I did work smart, that's the difference. And I leverage time. And if one thing motivates me, it's time. We're not getting any younger. So I'm not 100% sure of what is causing your angst, your fear of failure, but I can only encourage you, if you're serious about moving forward, you've got to battle those demons. You've got to conquer those demons. Uh, no, one can, no one can do it for you. No one can do it for you, man. You've got to find a way to grind it out yourself. So, um, Cedric, Sarah, Sean, Christine, Javon, and Jonathan, and, and I know there's more of you guys. I didn't mention your name, but if you're watching this, you know who you are. Um, you've got to find a way to overcome the fear of failure. I mean, no reward has ever come from not taking a risk. So do it. Let me continue. Cameron and Latasha Bryant. Latasha, my Dunkin' Donuts sister. I've corrupted you, sister. I love it. You are my fellow Dunkin' Donuts sister. I love it. Pretty soon, I'm going to have you eating hot dogs from Sam's Club. Yes, the fat man eats Sam's Club hot dogs. I can't help it. I'm fat. I love them. So, Latasha writes, I want to expand and diversify and I know I have the drive to do what it takes to be successful, but I believe that uh, what is failing me is the know-how. I am so cautious. A little bit of fear and failure there. I am so cautious. And I overthink everything. Ooh. A little anxiety. I do that. It holds me back. It can be a strength and a weakness. Starting this business was one of the scariest things, fear, I have ever did, and it is still scary. But it feels good knowing that I am actually doing it. Ooh, so you took a leap of faith. You're facing the demons. Me love it. Me love it. This is exactly why I'm including this in this in this video, and I'm reading this. Um, I am actually doing it, and and as time passes, I am encouraged to venture out into other businesses. Ooh, compounding confidence, Latasha. Me like. Me like. So you were scared had high degree of anxiety, you face the demons, you're moving forward, you're starting to experience success, compounding success, success breeds success. Uh, let's see, let me pick up. It said, uh, she said, I am encouraged to venture out into other businesses. You are the broker, will be a great transition. Ooh, I like what you're saying here. More on that later. I would love to start my own broker business, not just to make a lot, uh, a lot, lot more money, but to give some money uh, to the young men I know who are working working jobs, making eight, ten, and twelve dollars an hour, a chance to build their own business. Very good, very good. Again, I love the fact you've identified the problem, you've identified, and you've been honest with your own fear, anxiety, angst, whatever, and you are conquering those demons moving forward, poised in position to do bigger and better things. More on that in a few minutes here, Latasha. Jason Griffin, I'm going to absolutely undeniably kill you. I'm going to punch you in the face, not even with my own fist, I'm gonna punch you in the face with your fist because you are listening to nonsensical advice from your attorney. Yes, I said it, your attorney. Jason Griffin, you sent me a very long email. I read it all. You're a smart dude. You're a hard working dude. You got a lot going on. Jason, has a big, uh, big ex level of uh, experience in the freight industry. Jason, as a side note, I will tell you, I believe we there are five or six of our licensees. You are the broker who came from freight. They abandoned freight. Why? Because it is a window opportunity that's closing, and yet the com the level of competition is increasing, which is increasing the cost, and it's not making it cost effective. Hence the reason they bailed out of freight. I am so glad I never got into it, man. God had his hand on me. So glad I never got into it. But Jason, I'm going to pick on you before I punch you in the face with your own hand. Jason Griffin, if I am allowed to bring this other truck driver in from a foreign country, my attorney says, my attorney says, man, let the pros do what the pros do best. Man, you're an attorney. Go do some legal stuff. 
Go do some law stuff. Just because you're an attorney does not make you an entrepreneur. Just because you're smart with law doesn't mean that you're good with business. Just because you're good with law doesn't mean you're good at being a visionary, being a leader, being good with managing people, team building, uncovering real opportunities in business. I could go on and on. Hopefully you're picking this up where I'm headed with this, Jason Griffin. Let me start that from the top, just to be clear. If I am allowed to bring this other truck driver in from a foreign country, trying to put a square peg into a round hole, my attorney says I have a good shot at bringing in more. Let me bring in more square pegs and try to put them in more round holes. Maybe I should keep this trucking business open? What? If I can get more drivers from other countries and just jump straight into the brokerage, Jason, I love you, brother. I, I love that you appreciate all my videos and all my information. I loved your email and everything you shared. I love the honesty. Stop trying, this is what I call, this is what I call. Stop trying to create a solution and then go find the problem. That's not how businesses are built. That's not how you maximize opportunity. You don't build something you want and then go try to find a place to position it, find a place to fill it, try to find a place to, to shelter it. As an entrepreneur, the easiest way to make money, find a problem, create the solution. In reading your lengthy email, which I do appreciate, in reading your lengthy email, everything was based upon if then, if I do this, if I do that, this and that. Again, everything you share with me, Jason, and I'm sure there's plenty more of you watching this, you can relate to Jason, so even though I'm picking on Jason, you gotta hear me out. You wanna make real money? Don't waste time. Increase capacity. Focus on making real money, which means increasing your margin. Do more with less, which means you Create a solution to an existing problem. Don't try to create a solution and then go out there and try to find the problem. That's misapplied effort. You're wasting time, wasting effort. Jason, ditch all this nonsense. Ditch everything. Again, I loved your email, appreciate it. I loved all the honesty, all the detail. You put great effort into it, but bro, and, I, and you, you clearly articulate, you appreciate everything that I've shared and all that kind of good stuff. Awesome, love it. Misapplied effort misapplied direction. Let me go back to high school football. Here's what would happen in high school football. Again, I told you this video is also about high school football and it does affect your business. So here's what would happen. If I went into our high school, I mean, we have phenomenal athletes. If I went into our high school and I was able to personally pick all the athletes and they came out for football, man, we would be winning national titles. But so many of those kids were lazy. So many of those kids, they would try to play sports that, man, God did not make you for, for that sport. For example, I go see this nice, big, heavy set looking kid, like, mm, I'm gonna turn you into a nice, strong, legitimate, hard nosed fat man. No, 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 coach. I'm a lacrosse player. What? Dude, lacrosse is about speed. You're too fat. No, you're not a lacrosse player. You are a football player. God made you a football player. You could be big, but if you're big for nothing, then you're big for nothing. You are not a lacrosse player. You are loving a sport that does, that does not love you back. God made you that size to go whoop someone's ASS on the football field, not to try to run around and be a sprinter when you're not a sprinter. Again, you love a sport that's never going to love you back. Jason Griffin, you're loving a business that's never going to love you back. Why? You're trying. If you have to force putting square pegs into round holes, you're loving a business that doesn't love you back. Ditch it, bail, get out of it. If there's one thing that I definitely am, if there is one thing that can be said about Joel Davis and it's an acquired skill, I am painfully agnostic, unemotional when it comes to business, unconditionally. And again, this is an acquired skill. If you look back in the day when I was first launching my business, man, I was riding every wave of enthusiasm, every victory. Oh man, I get down for every defeat, waste money. Oh man, I feel bad. Made money. Oh man, I'd celebrate this and that. Now I don't care either way. It's just like when people send us hate mail, I don't care. I don't even read it. I don't care. If you unsubscribe, the fat man keeps moving on. I am agnostic to it. Jason and everybody else watching this, I encourage you, you need to develop a degree, and it's a skill. You've got to develop 
an ability to be agnostic when it comes to making business decisions. That's why I say, you just like playing cards, man, you gotta play the hand you're dealt. You got whatever you're dealt, that's your first hand, and thereafter, it's how well you play the game. This is what is applied to your business, Jason. You were you need to start playing the hand you're dealt. Stop wasting time, misapplied effort, money, uh, just overall mental capacity. Because I, I could tell by reading your email, man, you have a lot invested in this emotionally. Ditch it. Stop trying to put the square peg in the round hole. And please stop listening to your attorney for business advice. Go to your attorney for legal advice to help protect you for this, protect you for that, advise you on this, advise you on that when it comes to legal matters. Not when it comes to business matters. And yes, I can assure you, I can assure you, they're not the same thing. They're different. Getting legal advice and getting business advice are two totally different things. Hey, did I not tell you this is gonna be a long video? I told you, there's a reason why I'm sitting at my desk shooting this video, because I got a lot of notes. And I gotta make some notes. So, let me continue on. Give, give some shout outs here. Joy Pearson, facing, increase, facing increasing insurance premiums, want to raise capital to start broker business. Muriel Kelso, I hope I got that right, facing increasing insurance premiums. Wanted to attend my event, but it was sold out. That's why you gotta move fast. And let me thank all of you who made your reservations for that seminar. Man, you guys just absolutely floored me, blew my mind how quickly you guys made your reservations. I love you and I appreciate it. And I mean that sincerely. I know I joke around a lot, talk a lot of nonsense. I truly am humbled and appreciate that more than you know. Um, Mike Gaines facing increasing insurance premiums. Jeanette Gibson facing insur uh, increasing insurance premiums. Uh, Daphne Hawkins, my Christian sister. You actually thought that I forgot you. Come on, sister. Don't you remember the talk that we had at my seminar? I remember you came in before the event kicked off. You and I had a, uh, had a nice conversation. Um, Daphne, I've been following you for a while now. Oh, yes, I know. You came to my event in Virginia. I've been to one of your seminars. Yes. It was very informative. Excellent. Where have you been since then? It's been many years, sister. I would have loved to make your event, but unfortunately it was sold out. Yes, it was. You must act quickly again. Did I thank you all? making your reservations, I appreciate it. If I didn't say it again, I'm gonna keep saying it because I really do appreciate it. Uh, having a hard time getting paid for Medicaid recipients, slow payments. Yvette Lane, dependent on Medicaid brokers. Paul Hathaway, dependent on Medicaid brokers. Tim Young, dependent on Medicaid brokers. I'm sure I could list off another million people with similar problems whether it's something to do with insurance premiums, overhead expenses, dependent upon brokers and getting reimbursements. I'm sure I could read a million more. So again, don't take it personal if I didn't give you a shout out because a lot of you guys sent me awesome, uh, awesome emails. Anyways, what is my point to all this? You've got to play the hand that you're dealt. And look, when I told you previously, you have got to work to be agnostic. Let me put it to you like this. So many people, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got an apology here. In fact, I made even a little, I made a little bit of a note here to make sure that I remind everybody that I apologize because um, I did get an email recently about conventions. How I was kind of bashing the conventions. I look, I'm not bashing conventions. Some, some, some people watching this, you need conventions. You're a convention girl, a convention guy. You need to be in that environment where you get all those people and the clamoring, this and that, and and you get to slap people's back and. And, and boast about what you've accomplished and what you've done, your experience, and, and then go to your breakout groups, get your lanyards, people love the lanyards, uh, the nameplates, they love all that kind of good stuff, get some freebies, go listen to the lecturers, sell their stuff. Um, there's some of you watching this, you need those conventions, man. Go after them. Be a, be a convention cookie monster, man. Love that stuff. That's not Joel. That's not the fat man. That's not me. Um, I've been invited to come speak at those and I don't do it. Why? Because guess what? That's all about selling someone else's stuff. 
And you know what it is? It's all those, the, the bigger companies, the institutionalized uh, companies that have big backing, whether they, big funds from the from different government entities, uh, they can afford all the, the big this and the big that and the new this and the new that and all this nonsensical uh, technologies. And they're all incestuously intertwined, uh, preferred this, preferred that, good old boy network to get this deal cut. That is just not the fat man. I want to speak to you, that person out there that has one vehicle, two vehicles, three vehicles, five vehicles, seven vehicles. You're a small mom and pop operation. Guess what, man? Those conventions, you can go to those, buy someone else's stuff, do all that back slapping nonsense. That is not me. My goal, again, is to teach you how to make money. Bottom line, so many of you become... Uh, interested in that I'm gonna pick on NEMT for a minute so many of you become interested in NEMT from your personal experience okay you used to take your mother she was on dialysis you used to take your grandfather you used to take your grandmother uh, radiation whatever you saw people waiting you witnessed it firsthand the demand for it and that's awesome I cannot under any circumstances belittle that motivation in the least I love it and I appreciate it and I openly tell people, when I was first starting my business back in the day, man, I was just motivated off money. But then after you legitimately help people who are in need, you cannot help but be humbled. However, and that brought the, the humanity of the business out of me. And I realized that, you know what, God was using me as a tool to help build me, grow me, refine me. Not just my, the business itself, but me personally. Now, with all that being said, there is nothing wrong with me saying to you, you need to make money. Going back to the very beginning of this video, I want you to make money as fast as possible, build a cash reserve. I want you to have cash on hand, uh, be able to sell your business so it is a legitimate uh, multiple. So you can legitimately invest in your business, start it from the ground up, bootstrap it, and legitimately sell it in a number of years and make real bank. That's the fastest way to make money. I know some people are like, oh, go get real estate, sit on it, hold on it, this and Man, the fastest way to make money is starting your own business, bottom line, and then cash out. Set it up properly, build it properly, cash out. So some of you watched this video, you became involved specifically because you witnessed it firsthand in caring for a loved one. I love it. Absolutely love it. And some people will say, oh, well, I just want to make a little bit of this. I want to make a little bit of that. I can't help you. If you just if you just want to make a little bit of this and a little bit of that and you just want to scrape by and scramble by, I got to be honest with you, I really can't help you much. But it, regardless of your motivation, whatever prompted you, whatever gave you the idea, whether it was transporting your loved one to dialysis, radiation, chemo, medical appointments, whatever, whatever brought you into it, now that you're in the game, my goal is for you to build your business as profitably as possible so it can be sold at, uh, at the highest multiple possible so you can cash out at a great uh, price point, cash out with a strong cash reserve. Uh, I want a great deal for you. Okay, it's the quickest way for you to make money. So with that being said though, and going back to Joy, and Muriel, and Mike, and Jeanette, and Daphne, and Yvette, and Paul, and Tim, and everybody else here, when you tell me that my, I'm having a hard time, insurance premiums are going up, Medicaid reimbursements are uh, are slow, it's affected my business, or um, you got problem A or problem B or problem C, whatever those problems are, that's part of the hand that you're dealt, okay? And I'm gonna play this game, because I got my cards, I'm gonna play this game to the best of my ability. Now the minute I realize that man, this business is not gonna make me money, I'm out. I'm out, because I'm agnostic to it. I am out. I am not gonna operate at a loss. Now, Joel, I got into this business because I used to transport my mother to dialysis and I saw that people are waiting. And I agree. People are waiting. People are getting screwed over. I could show you countless uh, people who are client providers of mine who I got one lady who uh, logistic carols or it's only like just over three thousand. It's like thirty two hundred dollars. But man, they've been playing her along for like six months. She will not do any more transports for them until she collects her payment, which is great. And mind you, trust me, she's on the bottom of the scale. I got some people who, you know, logistic carriers try to screw them out of $80,000. I've seen everything, you know, in between. My point is, you cannot at any point in time 
whether at the inception of your business, during your business, at the end of your business, you can never operate at a loss. So despite the fact that you came into this industry painfully well-intentioned, and I cannot compliment and congratulate you enough for having a big heart, uh, being a person of compassion, um, legitimately seeing the opportunity, because there is an opportunity out there, uh, if you build your business the right way. So I congratulate you for coming in, but once you're in, the burden is on you now to be successful. If you got Medicaid who is not paying you, who's screwing you over, you don't do it anymore. Because think about this. Let me put things in perspective for you. Take the client provider I just mentioned. They owe her $3,200. It's not a lot of money, but it is what it is. Okay. She accepted to perform the, the, this work. Now, Logisticare, Logisticare received government funds for those trips. So Logisticare has been paid at a higher price point than what they're paying the, the transportation provider. It is what it is. Part the, don't hate the player, hate the game. That's part of the game. But my client provider performed those trips in good faith, got all the approvals, got all this, got all that. Logisticare collected all the money at a higher price point. And now they're failing to pay her. Granted, I get it. $3,200 isn't a lot of money. I get all that. But regardless, it's still theft. Whether you steal a penny or you steal a million dollars, it's still theft. Logisticare straight up stole. And not only did Logisticare steal at a higher price point, but my client not only didn't get paid, she paid to transport those people because those drivers, they've already been paid. That gas already been paid. The wear and tear has already been paid. So not only did Logisticare get paid and they stole the money, my client provider literally paid free of, you know, at her own expense. I mean, she, she paid. Nothing free here. She legitimately paid her paid to transport these people because she paid employees all kinds of stuff. It's a, it's a messed up system. So when you personally, whether it's Joel, my mother, she needs it, and I, that's what got me into this business. And I have a heart. I know you have a heart of compassion, and I congratulate you enough. But you cannot operate at a loss. So I apologize for being long winded, but it goes back to my point of you play the hand that you are dealt. You do not operate at a loss. So if the hand that you're dealt right now is showing you that Logisticare, MTM, Southeast Trans, Access to Care, Access on Time, blah, 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 ABC, XYZ, whatever. There's a million and one brokers out there now. If these brokers are not compensating you, first of all, you have the wrong business model. Yeah, it, it would be easy for me to blame the broker, and I could do that on one, one, one side of my mouth. But on the other side of my mouth, I'm also going to blame you because you continue to put yourself in that situation. People want me to, oh, Joel, it's so hard, but you, you, you keep doing it. You keep doing it. Play the hand you're dealt. We are here to be profitable. We are here to create wealth. I want you to make money. Well, if again, I always say it, if I'm drowning in 10 feet of water, the last thing I need is five more feet of water. So when these brokers, oh, I know the reimbursements may be a little lower, but, We'll give you volume. We'll give you more. Again, if I'm drowning in 10 feet of water, the last thing I need is five more feet of water. Ditch it. Hey, you know what? If your insurance premiums, if they're too high, ditch it. Ditch it. Again, let's go back to the very beginning. I want you doing more with less. It goes back to what I told you about capacity. I want you doing more with less. Part of the way to reduce your insurance insurance premiums, again, is do more with less. Why am I carrying 10 vehicles when I get the right vehicles and I operate with a fleet of five? Why am I operating with a fleet of 20 vehicles when I get the right vehicles and I'm operating with a fleet of 10 or 12? Again, follow the business models that I've been teaching you. So many of you people, you're actually, you are actually out there purchasing ambulatory vehicles. That is the craziest thing you could possibly do. That is the craziest thing you could possibly do is purchase and insure an ambulatory vehicle. Insane. It does not allow you to increase your capacity and do more with less. All it does is expose you to higher insurance premiums. But again, what do I know? No one listens to the fat man. Unbelievable. If any, again, I apologize for rambling. I apologize for being lengthy. But I hope you're, I hope you're still watching because I got some good stuff coming at you. Now here's where we're at. Here's where the rubber hits the road. So many of you have expressed your desire to for the build, grow, and expand your business and everything, and, and you see the opportunity in starting your broker business. So for a limited time, 
for a limited time to get some of you who are just kind of caught in a quagmire, you're not sure where to go, you see the opportunity with the broker business and all that kind of good stuff, for a limited time, here's what we're gonna do. For 75% off, now there, be, listen to my words crystal clear, and watch this again and again so you understand crystal clear so you know what you're getting into. Becoming an active licensee for youarethebroker.com is $20,000. That will not change. For a limited time, for those of you, send us some of these great emails. For a limited time, for 75% off, which is $5,000, um, you can sign up directly. We will send you the training material. Listen very closely to what I'm saying. For only 25% of the value of becoming a licensee, licensee is $20,000. For only $5,000, we're gonna ship you all of your training material for youarethebroker.com. This is going to get you access to everything so you can learn the business as soon as possible. Now, Again, I told you, pay attention to everything I say. This doesn't make you an active licensee. Becoming an active licensee is still $20,000, no question. For $5,000, we're gonna ship you all of the training material so you could start learning the business as soon as possible. Notice what I said. This does not include one-on-one -on -one coaching as in you're not gonna be working with one of my RDs. A large portion of the $20,000, hence the reason it's $20,000 to become an active licensee, because your enrollment investment of $20,000 helps cover the cost of one full year of one-on-one -on -one coaching with one of my regional directors. I got six regional directors, five of them work with us with youarethebroker.com. They literally help walk you through, teach you the business in addition to all the training material. So, let me, again, I'm going to reiterate all of this. So many of you, you're interested in going in. You want to learn more. I can't make this a better opportunity than this. This is the best I could possibly do. For $5,000, we're going to ship you all of your training material. It will not include any one-on-one -on -one coaching with one of my RDs. It's not going to include any of the software. None, none of it's going to be integrated. Nothing together. But here's what it does. It gets you everything. You start studying it. Start studying the heck out of it. You start laying the foundation for it. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to learn the business. I'm gonna give it to you. $5,000, you're gonna get all the training material. I want you to learn the business. I want you to uh, incorporate your business. I want you to incorporate your business. So, so some of you who sent us emails and you're not already in business, I want you to incorporate either your S Corp or your L form your LLC, whatever, so you can legitimately, as we pull in 2020, you can legitimately have a write-off for next year. So I want you to get all the training material. You're going to get a ton of DVDs. You're going to get a training training uh, book in there to follow some of the DVDs. I want you learning the business inside now ASAP. You're going to be learning the business from $5,000. Um, I want you to incorporate your business so that way you have a legitimate, uh, I want you to start, bottom line, I want you to have write-offs. So as of the new year, even though if you're not fully operational, I want you taking write-offs. I mean, I'm talking things like your cell phone, vehicle, okay, cell phone is obvious, ob an obvious business expense, write it off. Uh, your vehicle, the fuel, insurance, the wear and tear, because guess what? In my broker business, it's traveling. It's your, I drive, meet with people, I mean, the whole you're, you're like a business consultant, you really are. Those things need to be written off. Marketing expenses, when you are ready to launch, marketing expenses, a portion, if you're working from home, that's awesome, a portion of your home right off. Now, some of you already have an existing business, your existing NEMT, existing home care, but some of you who emailed me, you haven't done anything yet, you, you, don't, even, you don't even have a business, uh, you have no write-offs, my goal is for you to learn the business at the lowest possible price point. Learn right now, um, and right out, and bottom line, have write-offs for next year. I always say the easiest way to make money is to save money. And when I say that, a lot of people get confused by that. They think it's like, oh, pinch pennies, cut coupons. Yeah, that's great. Do all that if you want, whatever. 
But the easiest way to make money is to save money. And bottom line, the first way you start doing that is beating the, the IRS, beating the tax man by incorporating your business and having legitimate write-offs. Now, some other things. Um, I want an additional learning material, incorporating the business, having write-offs, all that kind of stuff. As you learn, watch those DVDs. I'm going to teach you about marketing, positioning the business, all that kind of good stuff. I want you researching, talking to, uh, and making possible connections in your community. I mean, I want you to lay the foundation for it. Um, when you're and save money, save money because here's the deal: you're going to be able to learn the business, start laying the foundation, doing the research for five thousand dollars. That's it. That's it. I mean, I can't make it any more feasible or more palatable or to get it in your hands, to get you moving, to get you started. So for all of you, I'd like to. I'm not sure. I'm scared. This and that. I, I can't be any more amicable or helpful than what I'm doing right now. Save money, save your additional 15,000. Because when you're ready to move forward and become an active licensee, that's when it's time to pony up, that's when it's time to send in your your $15,000 because that's when you when it's time for you to start working one-on-one -on -one with my one of my guys, boom. We need the money. Bottom line, because again, part of your enrollment investment of $20,000 for everyone else who's joined at the $20,000 price point a large portion that goes to paying my RD because they put time on the phone, emails. They help teach you everything from the software, all the particulars of dealing, being a contractor, doing this, doing that. I mean, my, my RDs are awesome. My RDs are awesome, bottom line. I love them. Um, they're my best earners, bottom line. Um, and they're going to be a valuable asset to your team. So again, your $5,000 investment in youarethebroker.com at this point in time does not include any type of one-on-one -on -one help. It doesn't include the software. It doesn't include the software integration or that. It's strictly the, the, the material. Um, here's what I want you to do. If you take advantage of the $5,000 um, opportunity for youarethebroker.com, first thing you got to do, ASAP, email Amelia at Amelia, that's E-M-I-L-I-A R Daniels, Amelia R Daniels at yahoo.com. That's her personal email. And she will email you an electronic invoice. You can pay your commands and we will ship you a big box full of uh, some training materials, a ton of DVDs. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to watch those DVDs first. Pay close attention. Watch the DVDs along with the one man, the training manual. Watch it all first. Watch all that training, all the DVDs first. Then, here's the caveat. Then I want you to watch a recording of my round table gathering that we did recently in Atlanta. The reason that's important, the round table gathering, we had, we talked heavily in the morning about NEMT and home care. And we also intertwined that throughout the afternoon, but the afternoon was heavy uh, conversation regarding the broker business. The reason why I want you to watch what I send you first, all the DVDs regarding youarethebroker.com, Watch those first. If you take advantage of this $5,000 opportunity, you're going to get a free copy of the Roundtable Gathering. Again, that's another huge series because it's a full day event. I mean, so you're going to, there's a lot there. Okay, so that's going to benefit you. If you're involved in NEMT, if you're involved in home care, those, the Roundtable Gathering is obviously going to help you. But the reason I want you to first watch the YouAreTheBroker.com training series, then the Roundtable Gathering, is because at the Roundtable Gathering, I specifically talk about uh, complementary information to youarethebroker.com. So in my youarethebroker.com, you're going to see all these different policies and procedures and the core structure that we have and we implement. But the roundtable gathering, when I talk about the youarethebroker.com system, I talk about how, again, I operate in five states. So I talk about at, you, at the roundtable gathering how in some of those key areas where I operate my broker business, we have variations in policies, rules, tactics, things that we do a little bit different. I want you to learn the foundation first through everything I'm going to send you. After you watch all those DVDs, then watch the Roundtable Gathering series. Again, when you watch that, it'll definitely help you if you're already in the NEMT and home care. But it's definitely going to help you with youarethebroker.com. So, if I missed anything, I apologize. But hopefully you get the gist of it. If you are serious, now look, if you guys sent me all these great emails and then I can't offer you a better deal than what I just did, bottom line. And I hate feeling like I'm being a salesman because I hate salesmen. 
Um, I love sales, but I hate sales, but I hate pushy nonsense. I'm just trying to provide the best possible situation for you. Win-win situation, because this helps me too, because my job is to develop the best possible licensees I can. Um, and hopefully that includes you. So $5,000 will learn you, you'll learn all the business, I'll teach you the business, you're gonna get all big box DVDs, all that pretty stuff. Study the heck out of that. You're gonna get a copy of the round table gathering. You watch that second after you've watched all the DVDs, gone through the manual with you at the broker.com, then you watch the round table gathering. Now for those of you who attended the round table gathering, if you're watching this, don't worry, you're gonna get a free copy of it. So you're gonna get a free copy of the Roundtable Gathering DVD series. I'm sure you're gonna love it, enjoy it. We had a great time, so I'm sure it'll be a good opportunity to relive it and um, you know, just refresh your mind on everything that was discussed because there was a lot of information discussed there. So, if you're serious about moving forward, email my assistant, Amelia, E-M-I-L-I-A-R, Daniels, D-A-N-I-E-L-S, at yahoo.com. Tell her you're serious that you want the youarethebroker.com for $5,000. we are going to ship you the DVD series followed by the roundtable gathering. You, the $5,000, don't, don't be crazy. I, I'm going to say it one last time. $5,000 does not make you an active licensee. You're not going to get a contract. You're not going to get a contract. You're not going to be integrated with the software and the apps and all that kind of stuff. You're not going to be working one-on-one -on -one with one of my RDs. It's not going to happen. The $5,000 is for you to learn the heck out of the business. Learn the heck. Start doing some of the research. Doing some of the ground and pound. Um, start Incorporate the business itself. Start running legitimate write-offs through it. Because, hey, that's the easiest way to make money is to save money. Let's start leveraging that in the new year. Um, when you're ready to move forward, contact us. Um, that's when we'll get you set up. We'll get you set up with the, the licensing agreement. We'll go through the, what, those final stages. Uh, that's where that's where you would need to pay the additional $15,000. When you do that, that's also when you would start working with one of my RDs one-on-one. -on -one. When you sign your agreement, that's when your one-on-one -on -one would start. So if you you send us 5000 ASAP, you get the training material, you go through that, that's awesome. Um, but you're not under the clock. At that point in time, your $15,000, uh, you, you know, when you send your fifteen thousand dollars, that's when your um, your licensing application will start, and you'll get connected with my, one of my RDs. So again, I apologize for the lengthy video, uh, but it's been necessary. It's been um, very much important. Quick takeaways: increase your capacity, put yourself in a position where you uh, can make legitimate money where you can build and have cash on hand, do more with less, increase your capacity, increase your margins, have cash on hand, uh, play the hand that you're dealt, uh, don't be, become agnostic, don't be emotional, play the hand that you're dealt. If you got a bad hand, ditch it, get out, move on to the next thing, whether it's starting a broker business or something else, play the hand that you're dealt. When you play the hand that you're dealt, uh, when you become agnostic, unemotional to the business, um, details, uh, when you build cash on hand, then you got no excuse. I'll see you at the top.